for the Chinese research perspectives on the environment. Um, the Chinese research perspectives are based on uh, the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences yearbooks. They are originally published in Chinese. Um, Mr. Young is it's one of the main responsibilities is to review the original texts uh, in Chinese and make a selection for publication in English. Um, the volumes address urgent national and global environmental issues facing China and serve as a primary source in English for those interested in studying the development of civil society phenomena in China. So welcome, Mr. Yang. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, um, how did you become interested and involved in the Chinese Research Perspectives series on the environment? Um, it's a long story. Um, I, uh, after I finished my uh, dissertation work on the Chinese Cultural Revolution, I was uh, uh, beginning to think about the new research projects, and that was in about 2002. I was doing field work in China in the summertime, and uh, really mingling with a, group, a few group, uh, groups of uh, young environmental activists, and uh, that was the beginning of my work on China's environmental activism. It was uh, relatively new uh, to me, but it was also a relatively young field at that time in China. But I was really very impressed and attracted by the energy of the young people in these activities. They had very little resources, um, but they were able to uh, organize activities, projects uh, online through the internet, through their own websites, um, and then doing environmental projects, recycling, but also other kind of uh, community projects, as well as the protect, pr protection of uh, endangered species. Uh, it, there was a major campaign about the protection of uh, Tibetan antelope and so on. So it goes all the way back there. And that was uh, when I started my research, and I've been following research for many years, and mainly focusing on environmental NGO activism. And these kind of uh, organizations are mainly based uh, in urban areas. And some of the most influential ones are based in Beijing. One of the leading organizations uh, at that time, and still is, uh, Friends of Nature. And the, uh, the president of the uh, Friends of Nature, Professor Liang Cunjie, passed away in 2010. But uh, he was a uh, person, I think, and with his staff and Friends of Nature, uh, who started to do a lot of uh, research, not just advocacy, but research, very careful research and reporting and investigation into environmental problems around the country. And they were publishing a lot of these materials initially on their website, and then they had a newsletter online as well as offline, a regular magazine kind of newsletter. And gradually they came up with the idea of publishing a green book for China. I think the first one probably appeared in 2005, if I remember correctly, the first green book ever. That was in Chinese. And I instantly found that a very useful resource book my own research as well as for my teaching uh, in the field of uh, contemporary Chinese society because uh, it's an annual publication, it still is an annual publication, which uh, I think covers quite comprehensively about major issues, environmental issues in China in the past year. And the articles were written by journalists, scholars, as well as activists and NGOs and it represents, the whole Green Book represents a very unique perspective about China's environmental issues and the perspective is a civil society perspective. And I think that's really refreshing, but it's also a very valuable addition to you know, other perspectives, government, there are government statistics and so on, but this is, is a story is fresh from the field and uh, the students here really like reading these kind of stories. There's good research, but there are also good stories from, from, uh, from this book. Um, 
and I think it was a few years uh, after 2005, probably 2007 or 2008, uh, when we all decided to publish an English version of that book, and I was invited to join the uh, International Advisory Board together with uh, Professor Judith Shapiro in American University. I instantly you know, embraced the idea. I was really uh, thrilled by the idea that uh, there was going to be an English edition of this book to bring you know, Chinese local civil society perspectives about the environment to the international audience. And I thought it was a very valuable uh, kind of work. And um, uh, you know, the, that's why, uh, that's, the, that's the long story kind of show that's how I was uh, involved in this book. That's great. And um, so one of your main responsibilities is to, um, to to find the right text to translate them to into English because you don't choose all the articles that are published in Chinese because they're not relevant. So how do you choose that? How do you choose which publications to open up for the Western world and have them translated into English? Right. Well, actually, a lot of this kind of uh, selection work we based on the original Chinese book, and Chinese book is relatively thick, and we, we read, read through the chapters. Um, you know, uh, there are many, many uh, different articles to choose from. There are several kind of uh, things we, we really watched out for. We wanted to have uh, the original work that you know stories from the field, right? Investigative reports. Um, that's one kind of work we're, we're interested in. Um, and I think that's important that, that international readers will be interested in reading that kind of stories. Almost like a primary, primary research sources for the English readers. Right? It's original stories, reports, and so on. And uh, another kind of uh, story, uh, there are also more scholarly you know, research report, research analysis from these uh, NGO researchers, and as well as Chinese uh, academics. And uh, uh, you know, we usually the, the kind of start reports and studies that cover uh, the major stories of the previous year. We want to have a diverse, kind of comprehensive, but also diverse coverage of the major environmental events in the previous year, so that readers, when we look at these really stories, we get a sense, not just about individual stories, but a picture about what, are, what were the major environmental issues, challenges, developments, and as well as policy, the new policies that were in the, in the previous year. So that's another very important. There, uh, there are also, you know, we pay attention to the kind of new statistics, new data that's uh, generated through this research. Um, based on you know careful investigation of particular cases, we also pay attention to that kind of uh, articles, which can be used by English language uh, researchers at, again as kind of primary resources for their research. Cool. So, can you say anything about how you've seen since these years that you've been involved? Can you see how China is dealing with these issues, and what do you think? How are they going to deal with it in the future? Do you see major changes lately, or uh, has, has it become more important also for the Chinese government to deal with these uh, environmental issues? Yeah, I think there are changes both at the level of the government policy making as well, and, and at the level of uh, citizen engagement participation. So at the time when I started in 2002, uh, the government agency, the top level government agency, uh, in charge of environmental issues was still called the State Environmental uh, Administration, uh, SEPA, uh, in the State Environmental Protection Administration. It was a vice ministerial, mi ministerial level bu uh, bureaucracy. Uh, several years ago, um, 2008, if I remember correctly, the SEPA was uh, uh, promoted into the you know, minist ministerial level became the Ministry of Environmental Protection. So in, that was an indicator of a major change that the Chinese central government was uh, paying more attention into environmental, uh, pay more attention to environmental protection, putting more resources, investing much more than before 
in the you know, in environmental issues. In terms of actual policies and so on, there have also been new, many new policies to deal with environmental issues, and some of the most important ones, at least from the perspective of citizen participation, uh, are about policies of uh, environmental information disclosure, environmental impact assessment uh, regulations. These were you know, uh, instituted uh, mostly after 2004. I think 2004 was the time when the EI, uh, environmental impact assessment came into effect, and then information disclosure map act. These are major, major kind of uh, policy developments to encourage and to promote citizen participation. In terms of the uh, citizens and NGOs, again, you know, 10 years ago it was a much smaller field, I think, as far as I uh, can tell. Smaller field in terms of number of NGOs who are in, engaged in environmental protection issues. Uh, now there are many more organizations, environmental organizations, around the country. And uh, uh, also there, you know, there is, uh, I think, increasing diversity in the types of organizations. In, in, the, in the types of issues that they deal with. You know, early NGOs focus on nature conservation, and protection of animals and so on. Now, now, pollution is a major challenge. I think there are now organizations that deal with pollution, uh, urban trash incinerators, uh, kind of NIMBY-style protest is about uh, pollution issues in, in the cities. And these are some of the you know, younger NGOs and the new generation of NGOs, more grassroots. I think they are into these new new issues. So I think it's a, it's a, the earlier NGOs um, provided a strong foundation for NGO development, but now it's a dynamic field. They do not necessarily all, you know, uh, take very confrontational approaches uh, in terms of tactics. They they found, many of the organizations found that actually working with the government uh, can be a strong, uh, can be an effective approach and very often they get the support from environmental protection agencies or the Ministry of Environmental Protection. With that kind of support they can challenge local factories, local governments and so on. So it's, it's, it's a growing field, it's very, very, very uh, influential, very important, especially in these years. That's another part of the story that uh, China's environmental challenges have uh, increased, you know, become, certainly become more visible through the media stories, uh, large-scale protest activities around the country on environmental issues, both in rural areas and in, in, in cities. And so all these developments together, I think we see we, this, the, the, the series of books, research perspectives on China's environmental issues, I think it's uh, a very valuable resource for the researchers and activists as well. Great. Thank you very much for this insight in, in the latest developments uh, in China and, uh, and civil society and NGOs regarding environmental issues. We'll be reading your books closely and uh, hope to see you again. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.